Hello and uh, welcome to the Mubadala Aerospace R&D workshop being conducted at the Global Aerospace Summit. Uh, my name is Dr. Abdul Qadir Abu Safiya and I lead the Mubadala Aerospace R&D program and initiatives. We have a very good program for you today. You will see a good cross section of our R&D activities in support of two key businesses in the Mubadala uh, Aerospace portfolio, namely Strata Manufacturing and Senate Aerotech, which is an engine MRO service company in Abu Dhabi. There will be 10 presentations presented by various members of the team. And if you survive the technical nature of these presentations, you'll see a lot of emerging technologies and exciting technologies in AI, Internet of Things, data analytics, virtual reality, augmented reality, and 3D printing all being applied to solve the problems on the shop floor of these assets. Our program has been collaborative in nature. So we have collaborations with academic institutions, we have collaborations with OEM customers, and we have collaborations with technology providers and suppliers globally. The program itself consists of three main initiatives or centers, if you will. We have the application center at Strata, about eight active projects now, focused on developing technologies for manufacturing. Second, we have the Senate Aerotech R&D program, about seven active projects, focused on developing technologies for MRO processes and operations. And finally, we have the Aerospace Research and Innovation Center, ARIC, in collaboration with Khalifa University. Our discussion today is going to be mainly around strata and Senate industrial R&D activities. Uh, but I would like to mention two main things regarding ARIC. One, it's about 600 square meter of facility equipped with the latest and greatest capabilities in robotics and automation research and composite processing research and 3D printing. In fact, we have the largest and most sophisticated metallic 3D printer in the country, now at ARIC. A second, ARIC has been a very good platform for UE national students to perform their research work at various stages of their education, from the senior design projects to independent studies to master thesis to PhD thesis. Over the last five years, we had about 60 national students do their research work within ARIC in some form or another. Before we get into the presentations, I would like to take this as an opportunity to thank our sponsors. This program has been sponsored through a funding pool provided by Mubadala Aerospace Unit and a number of assets within the Mubadala Aerospace portfolio. Some of them are direct beneficiaries of that program. I would like to thank them all for their contributions to this program. Without that, we would not have been able to initiate or to continue this program. And finally, I would like to thank our customers for the program, our direct customers, Strata Manufacturing, represented by its CEO, Mr. Ismail Abdullah, and Senate Aerotech represented by its deputy group CEO, Mr. Mansour Janah. We thank them for their support, and they were kind enough to give us a few statements about their perspective of the program. Hopefully you enjoy that. Thank you. In 2015, here at Strata, we have established a dedicated research and technology function. The purpose of this new department is to spearhead Strata into the next phase of growth. Over the last number of years, we are extremely satisfied with this department. We were able to invest and deploy a number of critical technologies to aid the activities here at Strata. Most importantly, through research and technology, we were able to build a bridge between industry, which is Strata, as well as academia, a number of academic institutions here in the United Arab Emirates. 
The future belongs to companies that invest in technology and innovation and deploys it. Research and development is a key and integral component of Senate's long-term strategy. This was cemented in 2018 when we created a dedicated R&D team that works very closely with our internal stakeholders as well as our partners to enable our growth story. We are extremely proud of the initiatives that we have undertaken and the partnerships that we have launched. We are working very closely with our OEM customers. We are also working very closely with academia here in Abu Dhabi, with a number of universities, such as the Khalifa University and others as well. We see R&D as a, an integral part of Senad's long-term strategy and our drive towards technology and the fourth industrial revolution is demonstrated through the efforts of the R&D team. And I'm sure that the R&D team today will highlight some of the key initiatives that we have undertaken. We also welcome partners, we welcome uh, academia to give us ideas as well. We see technology as the future. We see technology as a key component supporting Senad and its various businesses to propel towards the future. And I hope that you enjoy the session with the team today. Hello and welcome. My name is George Kerwood. I'm a research specialist working across strata manufacturing and Senad Aerotech. It is my pleasure to provide you with today's agenda. We will start with presentations from Standard Aerotech. Firstly, Smart Connect with IoT Tooling by Afra Mahiri, Grinding Analytics by Bartosz Jurovitz, Automated Fan Case Repair by myself and Ali Al-Olama, RFID for Part Tracking in MRO by Ali Al-Olama, Digital and AR Tools in MRO by R&D Head Brain Moyo, Going Paperless with e-Signature by Randy Gadinga. Following these presentations, we will hear from Strata Manufacturing's R&D team with their projects grouped into three main groups. Firstly, Digital Solutions for Aerostructure Operations by Hindamin, Mariam al Jabari, and Damilola Folorancho, followed by Robotic Drilling Solutions for Aerostructure Assembly by R&D Head Gordon Ferguson and Andre Swart, and finally, 3D printing applications for aerostructures by Yazan Samara. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy these presentations. Marhaba, welcome. I'm Afra Mahiri, a junior operation engineer at Senad. We will be looking into the Smart Connect Torque Assembly that employs the Internet of Things technology we have incorporated at our MRO facility. The problem statement being addressed here tackles the twerking tasks that were manually carried out. This undeniably is a laborious, time-consuming job that is highly subjected for over-torquing, perhaps even improper torquing, that goes unnoticed, with no traceability of exact torque performed. You do set the torque wrench to a specific value, yes, but the one applied remains unknown. The approach taken was to digitize digitize and employ the Internet of Things technology. Smart digitized store punches connected to a torque network with the help of Internet of Things connectivity within the company aids the traceability of all data. This gives instantly precise information of the torque applied. The project has a quite fascinating commercial value resulting in more than 50% reduction in labor, but most importantly, no quality escape and the ability to track all carried out tasks. This convenient and connected solution majorly improved service quality, the significance of which was noted in an array of aspects, mainly task duration, accuracy, and its productivity. What used to manually take 75 seconds to tighten one bolt now only takes six seconds. What the network consists of? 
a main operating system where a predetermined program of target torque amounts and allowable tolerances is set up. From there, torque wrenches, or what is technically referred to as virtual stations, may be put to use simultaneously in various engine areas at various torque values. So every torque wrench has a small display window and LED lights where you can instantly know the exact torque that was applied, whether it's within acceptable tolerance range or should be redone, green and red lights will show respectively. This enables our fellow technicians to make necessary adjustments quickly and accurately to exact OEM specifications. Since it's easily handled and fast, imagine the powerful impact of it when you have repetitive tasks or 120 consecutive bolts for a compressor case, for instance. Just a quick demonstration. You can see how the display window shows the exact torque that was applied, and around the circumference of the tool, a green light shows that it is within manufacturer tolerances. Those smart torque crunches provide a complete total record of torque performance. With such data, you can easily track every parameter contributing to the torque, and with continuous experiments, an optimized scenario is easily achieved. Logs of all performed tasks, whether they were achieved, passed, or had to be redone, can be tracked, analyzed, and archived for audits or perhaps training purposes. A one-year trial of this technology really exceeded our target goals, with $170,000 of savings coming from the major reduction in manpower and man-hour. During this year, 130,000 tightenings were made. Manually performed, that should have taken 2,821 hours, but with the smart advanced store crunches, 145 total hours was all it took that's 2,600 hours saved, and more than 50% less labor needed. Thank you, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Bartos. I'm the R&D engineer of Sanat Aerotech, and I will be presenting today the Grinding Analytics project, which is part of Muvadala Aerospace R&D program. The Grinding Analytics project wants to avoid the manual entering data of grinding parameters of the intermediate pressure compressor of the rotor and case. Additionally to this, we would like to predict the engine performance of the serviced engines. The approach for this project is the introduction of the data analytics in the MRO operation, automate the calculation for the match grinding between rotor and case, and use commercial algorithm to predict the engine performance. The commercial value of this project is mainly the time savings and the cost avoidance for the unnecessary repairs. The estimated ROI is 83% and we are working with Danovat, our support partner. This project would like to introduce commercial algorithms to analyze the raw data from the machines in order to make engineering conclusions. This is a first project of data analytics in Sanat Aerotech and is in-house developed. The main benefits are the automated grinding calculation and secondly, prediction of the engine performance. The estimated investment is $18,500 with an ROI of 83% in time savings. The automated calculation aims to calculate the dimension of the rotor and case in an automatic way in order to set up the grinding machine. Additionally, it will be performed the match grinding between the blade and case and reduce the tip clearance. The benefits are the avoidance of the error, reduced time in calculations, enhance connectivity between machine and have a remote access of data. The second main benefit of this project is the prediction of the main parameter of the serviced engine. Using engineering software and algorithms like Gastrup, we'll be able to predict thermodynamic cycle of our engines and their key parameters. 
before and during the service. Some of these key, key parameters are the exhaust gas temperature margin, the specific thrust, the specific fuel consumption. The benefits is to know the parameters of the serviced engines before the maintenance in order to optimize the work scope and achieve the contractual parameters. This project is going through a development now and it will be implemented in Sanat Aerotech soon. Thank you for your attention. Welcome. My name is George Coward. I'm a research specialist within Strata Manufacturing's R&D team. Today I'll be presenting a project in progress at Sanad Aerotech, fan case repair automation, on behalf of myself and my colleague Ali Alalama. This project is directed to provide a new service offering at Sanad, the replacement of fan case ingress protective Teflon. As with many engine MRO operations, it involves the controlled surface treatment of a large cylindrical body. An automated approach has been targeted for this service in order to, to mitigate risks to high value repair subjects, as well as to avoid lengthy training of service staff in order to achieve additional highly skilled tasks. Through automation, we hope to minimize risks to the asset and consumables, deliver 100% RFT quality to our customers, reduce cycle time by 80% and alleviate staff from potentially hazardous tasks. In delivering our solution, we had to be mindful of minimizing impact to existing processes and plant and delivering a new technology to an aggressive timeline. Our technical approach was to design a minimal, portable rotary tool that can be docked into a static wall-mounted solution. The solution itself consists of a drive mechanism to rotate the fan case and two hot air blowers that allow for the controlled application of heat to the surface. These principal components form part of a turnkey solution consisting of wide application heat nozzles, a drive wheel, a pneumatic contactor for maintaining friction between the drive wheel and the rotary tool, human machine interface for operator programming and operation, integrated PLC, power distribution and control systems. The solution is wall mounted above a docking tool, which forms as a reciprocal for the rotating tr trolley containing the fan case. The solution is in its final stages of assembly awaiting deployment to operations. Thank you for your attention and thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Ali Al Ulama. I'm an R&D engineer at Sanad Aerotech and I will be talking about RFID. It is a technology that has been available for a while, but we believe we are the first to use end-to-end -end RFID process from engine arrival to engine departure. The RFID project is used to target the current problems during engine maintenance, which is difficulty in tracking of the engine parts. With the RFID, process of parts can be tracked remotely with a decrease in operation errors. The current process is defined using pre-inspection cards issued to start the disassembly of the engine. After that, plastic tags are attached to the part and it's sent to its required destination for maintenance. However, tracking of parts is difficult since it has to be done manually, and since there are no soft copy records, parts can get lost and mixed easily. The radio frequency identification or RFID is introduced to track parts and their progress remotely. The scope of this project covers the tagging of the parts, tracking of parts through each station during its maintenance plan, and the deactivation of tags after assembly. Now let's talk about the process. After parts are disassembled, an RFID tag is assigned to each part, and the parts are then sent to undergo its maintenance requirement. All tags are then checked in through RFID gate to update its prog progress. Departments will receive the part, will scan the tag to identify the task required. 
The task, such as inspection, cleaning, or repair, is performed on the part according to its maintenance plan. When the task is completed, tags are scanned again to update the part's progress. The part is then sent to its next maintenance destination. If a part is assembled into the engine, tags will be deactivated to be used for another part. Tracking can be done through the desktop screens that can be accessible remotely and to evaluate the status of the part, whether it is delayed or on time. The handheld devices are also used to identify the tag and the progress of the part and what type of task it is required to be done on the part. The benefits of using the RFID technology is 30% inventory reduction since all expired parts or lost parts are identified and known. 40% track trace productivity increase. And the time reduction in the writing of part has been decreased almost 80%. We have controlled inventory for about 80%. And 90% of the stock take inventory checklist. This project has already been deployed on the shop floor. And it is going through development now on these stores. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Brian Moyo. I'm head of research and development at Standard Aerotech. This is part of the Mubadala Aerospace Research and Development Program that is being executed at Standard by our research and development team. I'm going to be presenting three projects that are at various stages of maturity. In collaboration with our technical partners, Honeywell, we have successfully implemented a customized AI-based voice-assisted maintenance solution and are currently expanding into other areas. The problems we had were lengthy processes of capturing data during engine maintenance, multiple errors, manual entry of data, duplication of tasks. Our approach to mitigate the problem was to introduce an AI-based voice-assisted maintenance solution, providing a voice-guided workflow to the technician and validation of data at every stage during capture by voice. And this was integrated with our ERP system. This eventually resulted in us reducing a four to five day task to less than one day, an error-free data reflecting a true status of the engine or part being maintained, and reallocation of many power since the task can now be completed by one individual. Looking at the technology, it has a unique voice and pronunciation recognition capability. It has wireless connectivity to the ERP system through a voice server. It has barcode and QR code reading capability and it has capability to capture photographs for a record. A sample of the record that we get from the system is a trail of work done that is captured and the time taken for the task is recorded at each stage. Bottlenecks can now be identified and technicians trained appropriately. This record can also be retrieved when required even after the maintenance is completed. It is because of our capability to customize and our good relationship with our partner Hanwell that we continue to expand into the other areas of implementation for this voice assisted technology. In the additive manufacturing domain, we were faced with various challenges as operations such as high main hours consumed due to masking of parts, long lead time for spare parts for tools, and some tools and parts that are not readily available in the market. Our approach was to design and manufacture reusable fixtures that allow masking of parts in an easy way, and to enhance our design and redesign capability. In doing so, we had to collaborate with our partners from Strata and Khalifa University, including other international players like EOS. We expect 
that this collaboration and this manufacturing of reusable parts will reduce lead time in masking by more than 50%. It will improve the repeatability and quality of masking. It will reduce the cost of material used for masking by over 70% since the fixtures can be reused. We have successfully designed and printed protection covers for gears to avoid damage during handling. We also were able to print masking fixtures for our veins and blades, and these are actually now at the final printing stage for actual execution in the process. We have also been able to design a very complicated structure and additively print it with our partners at Strata and Khalifa University. The last project I'm presenting is the Remote Connected Worker Technology, which is being executed in collaboration with the railway. This was a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, which restricted movement of people. It affected and infected workers. It resulted in the unavailability of experts at all the time, either due to being affected or infected, or because they could not travel to give expert advice. Therefore, our approach is to introduce this technology that allows remote connectivity. It also allows remote expert knowledge transfer and mentoring. We expect it will increase productivity and reduce errors. We can also be able to record live tasks which can be used at a later stage as a reference for training. In terms of commercial value, we realize that it can increase productivity by reducing interruption by more than 80%. It also increases the support and access availability when required to more than 90% at all the time, since the expert can connect remotely. It can also mitigate the spread of infectious diseases because people may not need to be there all the time. They can assist each other remotely. And this will also provide savings from logistics and travel. And we can get the value from quick decision making whenever required, since people can collaborate quickly. And the training enhancements that comes from it, since there is restriction in groups of people, this will help in training purposes because people can be trained remotely on the actual work that is done. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Randy Gadingan. I am an R&D engineer of Sanad Aerotech. I will be presenting to you paperless and e-signature project. This is part of the Mabadala Aerospace R&D program being executed at Sanad by our R&D team. This project is being executed in collaboration with Infinite IT Solutions Company. What are the problems we are trying to resolve with this project? Number one, high cost is spent on printing, scanning, and verifying compliance documentation. Number two, increasing demand of storage space on documentation. Number three, delayed completion of compliance documentation. And lastly, misplaced damage or unreadable signature on documentation. So what's the approach of this project? We are trying to implement paperless and e-signature solution approved by regulatory authorities across all MRO maintenance operations covering IE V2500, Rolls-Royce Trent 700, and Gen X engines. So what is the commercial value of this project? We are trying to reduce time and cost in compliance documentation by 90%. We're trying to reduce document storage space by 90% and engine turnaround time by at least 5%. Modernize the MRO business through paperless and e-signature application. So how does the solution work? 
An inspector and a mechanic will use tablets during maintenance operations and use face recognition and PIN to secure invalidate information. A mechanic will log in using FR. He enters the data. To complete the work, he needs to input a PIN. Similarly, an inspector has to use a FR and then he enters the data and enter a PIN. To close the work order, an inspector has to verify the data that was inputted by the mechanic and then he needs to use face recognition to validate that the work is complete. So what are the benefits of this solution? It eliminates printing and scanning of documentation. It eliminates paper storage, reduce maintenance turnaround time, resolve misplaced and unreadable documentation, and eliminate unrecognized signature. I will now briefly walk you to the process. On this screen, an inspector will log in using face recognition. On this screen, an inspector will be able to assign a task to a mechanic. On this screen, a technician will be able to see his task list. On this screen, a technician executes his task. He inputs his observations, after which he needs to put his pin. On this screen, an inspector verifies the technician's task and he will put his signature beside the task. This project is under development right now. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Hinda Amin, a junior engineer working in the Research and Development Department in Srata. Today I will be covering some of the projects that Srata R&D is involved with. One of the projects we have worked on is the Smart Vacuum Sensor IoT project. Before going in depth about this project, I'll just take you through the initial stages of building composite aircraft. This is the flap track fairing, which is one of the parts we proudly manufacture in Strata. The manufacturing process starts with initially laying up sheets of carbon fiber. During layup, the part needs to go through a process we call compaction, which starts by covering the carbon fiber layers with a vacuum bag. In compaction, a certain pressure level is applied under the bag for a certain amount of time. And this is important because it allows the layers to stick together and removes any air bubbles in between that could result in a defect called porosity. Hello everyone. My name is Mary Mel Jabri. I am a senior production supervisor working in Strata in the fabrication business unit. There has been a problem addressed where a number of parts were scrapped or needed repair, and the root cause for that was due to the convection step in the clean room. There was an issue with the convection process where the pressure under the bag did not reach the required pressure level or the time to perform. Convection was not completed. Because of that, we have asked the help from the R&D department to automate the convection process. So the value of the implementing this project has actually reduced the number of rejected parts and improvement porosity defect by 20% with a saving of around 200,000 Durham per year. Now, my colleague Hand going to be completing the next slide. This is the setup that was previously used for compaction. During compaction, vacuum is applied and pressure sensor was attached. However, the compaction timer was controlled by an operator who can start and stop the compaction. In the new setup, we have added a wireless pressure sensor that measures the pressure, and when the required pressure is reached, it talks to the software to start the timer. The system also prevents operators from continuing the process of the layup until the time of compaction has been completed. Here is an example of how the system is implemented in Strata. Here is an aileron layup under compaction with a wireless sensor attached, as you can see in the picture on the right, that talks to the SL laser software. 
Another project we are implementing is the part tracking RFID project. Generally, RFID is a useful technology that can be used to track any asset within a company. For example, it can be used to manage inventory, to manage tools, and other processes. And it can help you understand where your assets are and what action needs to be taken. In Strata, there was a need to provide physical location of parts. This is because we used to rely on SAP-based part tracking, which does not provide physical location data. Also, parts and their documentation move together and sometimes may be separated and locating them requires time. So we are imp implementing a part tracking system using RFID technology and machine vision technology to eliminate the need for employees to manually track parts. This will result in a saving of $50,000 per year by reducing process time. Here's how we develop the part tracking project to determine location. We'll take a flap track fairing as an example. First, at the, at the tagging station, we attach a tag to the part and its traveler, which is the documentation that moves with the part. As the part moves from one area to another, it will pass through a part tracking gate. And using RFID technology by itself was actually challenging because at the gate, we can detect the part, but we will lack information to where it will be moving. And due to that, we have created a sensor fusion that combines data from RFID and machine vision. The machine vision camera will help us determine the direction of movement so we will know which part is moving and where it will be going to. And during manufacturing, the part will continue moving through gates to several areas, including NDT, for example. And as the part reaches final assembly, the tag will be removed and recycled to be used for other, other parts. Now we'll be playing a video of the software we developed. As you can see, an overhead camera is capturing a green floor. The floor was painted green for the purpose of tracking because previously the shadows were also detected as motion and caused a problem. So to, to make tracking more robust, we painted, the, we painted the floor green so that we can differentiate between shadows and the moving part. And now you'll see an operator moving a part. And as the part is moving, the RFID and machine vision will, be, will detect the part, as you can see on the right. And as the part continues moving and until it transitions, the location data will be successfully saved to a database. So this is how we currently detect parts and track movement. Hello everyone, my name is Gordon Ferguson. I'm the R&D Manager at Strata Manufacturing. Today I will show you some of the projects we are active on at Strata in the field of robotic automation. My colleague, Mr. Andre Swart, is a responsible R&D engineer for these two programs. The two projects we'll, I will discuss today are part of the Mobadla Aerospace R&D program being executed at Strata at our R&D center. They've been undertaken in collaboration with Khalifa University our supplier DG Robotics and our collaboration partner Boeing Research and Technology in Melbourne for the 787 program. Strata are currently busy with two significant robotics projects. Both are aimed at using robots with augmented positioning through vision systems or laser to take on repetitive tasks in the assembly line. The problem statement for both programs is the high volume of manually drilled fastener holes approximately 1,500 on the flap and in excess of 2,000 on the vertical fin. This represents a significant portion of the overall assembly time and also a significant opportunity for human error with the associated possibility of rework or scrap. We've created mobile robotic platforms with laser or visual positioning systems. We have created our own custom compact end effectors. We have incorporated LiDAR-based safety solutions and we have achieved deployment with minimal impact on the existing workstation. The value of our solutions is as follows. 50 to 80% reduction in drilling labor input, a 25% reduction in cutter costs, reduced cost and non-quality, reduced floor space requirements, 
in one case eliminating the requirement for a complete second set of assembly fixtures. And we have also positioned ourselves to take on future work with direct to robotic solutions. First project I will describe in more detail is a drill and countersink project on a large flap structure. The A350 IBF flap assembly requires the installation of in excess of a thousand fasteners in carbon and metallic structure in three assembly stages. Current drilling and countersinking is a fully manual process. The Strata solution is unique in that the robot is mounted on a mobile platform and is able to be moved in and out of position in front of the workpiece as necessary. The main advantages of the solution over and above the drilling labour reduction are as follows. There is no fixed robot infrastructure such as rails and fencing necessary. These are all integrated along with the robot safety mechanism onto the mobile platform. This means that the workstation will remain worker friendly when the robot is no longer in place. There is no precision relocating requirements for the robot relative to the workpiece. There is no significant changes to the existing assembly layout and there is no or minimal jig modifications required to accommodate the robot. A single mobile robot may service multiple workstations, in our case up to six. Here we see the actual system doing some test exercises during build in our laboratories, where we have simulated the actual manufacturing environment to support qualification. The mobile platform moves on an air caster system and the platform is stabilized on hydraulic feet when it is being moved into position. Robot localization relative to the part is established by a laser tracking system that will measure features on the jig or part and on the robot end effector. The system software incorporates a dynamic feedback loop that will automatically correct for robot or part deflection. We have also integrated a laser scanning system that is capable of measuring the part surface to establish normality at the drilling point and allow us to adjust for as-is surface conditions and performing inspection of the drilled holes. The system is equipped for automatic temporary fastener installation removal. It will be drilling and countersinking holes of varying diameters on carbon-carbon, carbon-aluminium and carbon-titanium structure on each flap. I'll briefly describe some of the features of the solution. As I mentioned previously, the system moves on air caster system, avoiding the need for rails or other guidance means. Using laser positioning, we can precisely establish the position of the robot relative to the workpiece and make the necessary transformations, thus there are no precision positioning features required for the robot. To help accommodate the stiffness disadvantage over a fixed robot installation, we have added hydraulic feet to help distribute the floor loads. These are deployed when the robot is in position to stiffen up the system. We have three fixed feet under the system and we have three hydraulic feet to which we apply a known preload before locking them off hydraulically. With the laser positioning system and dynamic feedback, the end effector is effectively positioned in real time relative to the laser, so we are able to seamlessly absorb any deflections as they occur. Drilling operations require multiple hole diameters and selection of cutting tools to suit different stack situations, for example the carbon-carbon, carbon-aluminium and carbon-titanium. We have included a 16 position tool holder to support this. The process order also requires the insertion of temporary fastness as the drilling proceeds to eliminate relative movement in the assembly. We have added a temporary fastener installation tool with a 360 position temporary fastener magazine. The laser measuring device is also included to verify the geometry of the cutting tools and temporary fastening. Here we see the system test set up in our laboratory for the qualification testing compared to the actual workstation. It is important that the test environment is fully representative of the actual production environment to ensure there are no surprises when we attempt deployment. Here we have the actual part to be presented in the same relative position as the actual workstation. The next project addresses satellite hole drilling on the 787 vertical fin. It is being undertaken in collaboration with the Boeing BR&T team in Melbourne, Australia. The 787 vertical fin is a very typical aircraft structure. The area that we are addressing has in excess of 2,000 nut plates. Each nut plate has two rivet holes associated with it. Here you see an example of the structure with the nut plates, the drilled structure and the manual drilling tool in use today. Our main opportunity is in the reduction of labour required to perform the task. 
which we've been able to reduce significantly by up to 80%. It also presents some significant quality and repeatability advantages. The opportunities to create quality defects include the following. Incorrect drill gun selection. The gun is matched to the nut plate to be installed, and there are several different types in use. Incorrect radial clocking of the holes. Radial orientation of the installed nut plate is currently achieved by eyeball. And countersink depth repeatability. In this case, we have developed a fully autonomous solution in collaboration with our customer. The solution consists of a drilling end effector mounted on a mobile base with a robotic arm. In deployment, the robot will autonomously navigate from its dock position to the workpiece using LiDAR-based navigation to within plus or minus 50 millimeters. Once in position, a camera mounted on the end effector will use fiducial recognition to obtain a more precise positioning sufficient to enable the robot to locate the target holes on the workpiece to within plus or minus 2.5 millimeters. The vision system then uses a hole recognition algorithm to locate the hole with adequate precision to enable drilling end effector to be inserted into the primary hole, plus or minus 0.2 millimeters. The drilling routine is then activated, the holes are drilled, and the robot moves on to the next target hole. Although this solution may not be as fast as a well-trained operator, it is more precise, more repeatable, it eliminates human error, and once fully mature, it could be deployed to operate with minimal or ultimately no supervision. This video is taken from one of our qualification tests where we were required to demonstrate that the system is able to recognize and react to unexpected situations that it will encounter in practice. Here we see the robot encountering some holes that have already been drilled and it has been trained to ignore them. It then moves on and finds a hole ready for drilling. It, it does its job there. Moves on to the next hole, which has been blanked off, recognizes that fact, moves on to the next hole, which it drills off, finds another blanked hole, moves on to the next fiducial, reorientates itself, moves to the target holes, and does the drilling recognizes a pre-drilled hole, recognizes a blank hole, and finds another hole to drill. This represents a small fraction of the testing that we have performed to demonstrate a robust and reliable solution that is production ready, safe to operate in the intended environment. I've presented two projects that both address drilling operations in our manufacturing environment. The two solutions, however, differ greatly due to specific requirements of the problems they address. What both solutions, however, have in common is that neither requires the traditional invasive infrastructure that normally accompanies the deployment of robots, and both deployments are achieved with no modification to existing workstations or the fixtures in them. It's extremely helpful in ensuring customer acceptance, continuity of a production, and de-risking the deployment. We've demonstrated our capabilities to specify, design, develop, qualify, and deploy complex robotic solutions integrating the following technologies. Autonomous robots, laser, laser metrology, LiDAR safety, vision systems, and dynamic feeding. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Yezan Samara. I'm a research engineer at Strata and I will be speaking to you about the 3D printing initiative here at Strata. With the recent growth in the vast landscape of technological development, Strata had a goal to join in on the emerging technologies. 3D printing quickly showed the most potential. As such, Strata was ready to expand its manufacturing capabilities to include both composite and additive manufacturing. This new technology gave Strata's engineers and technicians an environment to develop new ideas to improve production. 3D printing gives them the tools necessary to transform their ideas into practical prototypes deployed onto the production floor. In collaboration with Etihad, Strata was able to certify the only FDM printer in the MENA region for aircraft interiors. Not only that, but through another independent collaboration with Khalifa University, Strata was able to bring in metallic printing to its already growing portfolio. Through our 3D printing program, 
Customers can expect to receive custom-made parts at 25% the cost of traditional subtractive manufacturing and at half the process time, meaning faster part delivery at a fraction of the cost. Here at Strata, we have had a numerous amount of successes at our production facility. In some cases, we have seen an astonishing drop of 77% in process time when utilizing custom-made 3D printed tools. The real advantage of 3D printing comes from the fact that no additional capex investment is required, such as tooling molds as seen in injection molding, allowing our engineers to manufacture any part their heart desires. Additive manufacturing allows us to create custom-made parts at a relatively low cost, making it the ideal manufacturing choice for one-off complex parts. Some would say it is an engineer's dream come true. One of our most recent programs heavily relied on 3D printing. All our tools were too complex to be manufactured by traditional CNC. Injection molding posed too much of an investment, jeopardizing the budget of the program. Not to mention that due to the recent COVID outbreak, receiving such tooling from outside suppliers became near impossible at certain times. Enter the 3D printing department. We were able to meet all the budget constraints of our client while also taking as minimal time as possible. In some cases, Strata was able to manufacture the tools overnight. I would like to see any supplier PO get approved in less time than that. In 2016, Strata entered into collaboration with Etihad to certify the first 3D printed aircraft interior part. It was estimated that the overall certification process would take a total of two years. However, through hard work and determination, both Strata and Etihad were able to complete it in a mere six months. The business class shroud was not the only success. Strata was able to print, drill, bond, and assemble an outdated meal tray latch all within one week, proving yet again the true power of 3D printing. At its research and development facility, Strata houses the Fortis 900MC, the only heated chamber 3D printer capable of printing Ultim 9085, which happens to be the only certifiable FDM aerospace material. The Fortis 900MC boasts an incredible dimensional tolerance of 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters, while also maintaining that accuracy with a print time that is half that of other 3D printers. Not only that, but Strata also possesses a wide variety of industrial desktop 3D printers, allowing for user experimentation with both third-party materials and custom printing parameters. Through a collaboration with Khalifa University, Strata has access to one of the largest metallic 3D printers in the world. The EOS M400-4 has four independent lasers that can print four parts at a single time. A wide variety of materials can be produced ranging from steel, aluminium, and titanium parts, all at a build rate of 100 cubic centimeters per hour.